NASA says it's placing a high priority on its investigation of UFOs. The space agency announced in June that it would conduct a scientific study of what it calls unidentified aerial phenomena. Beginning this fall, a team of scientists led by an astrophysicist will try to identify and explain available data on UFOs. Humans have been reporting seeing objects of unknown origin in the sky for as long as we've been looking up. During the Second World War, Allied pilots reported seeing unidentified lights and objects in the sky. Which is where Dave Grohl got the idea for his band's name. And they would chase them, and they didn't know what they were, and they never caught them, so they called them Foo Fighters. NASA says it hopes the investigation will bring scientific research of UFOs into the mainstream, and potentially disprove all the sci-fi claims of aliens and flying saucers. The truth is out there. What do you think they'll find? All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, and up honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that tells his truth, and much respect to the Akim out there labor and his work, and also to the believers that across the four corners of the earth, the whole for elect, to USA, Shalom. So yeah, Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying and comforting to the hopeful elect, uh, you know, regarding the protection that the elect will receive in the time of Jacob's trouble, and which that will be a time in which, you know, uh, we will by no means be able to protect ourselves, but will be strictly dependent upon the mercy of Yahweh Bashem al by him releasing angels on the behalf of the elect to guide them throughout these certain circumstances that were meant to destroy us. And that requires faith to believe in. So ultimately in this video, I want to go into an account with King Hezekiah and uh, how the Lord sent an angel to protect them out of his trouble. All right. And as we get in Romans 15 and 4, for whatever things that were written aforetime, time, they were written for our learning, that we through comfort and patience of the scriptures might have hope. All right. So, without further ado, let's get into it. This is from uh, Vice.com. It says, Congress admits that UFOs are not man-made. Says threats increasing exponentially. And that's <laughs> a good sign if you're in the right spirit, all right? Um, these devils are threatened by the sights that they are seeing. And they can no longer hide, you know, what's going on to the point of where they're not just saying that these are not man-made. I mean, you got the angels. <clears throat> who are descending from what 33,000 feet in the air down to the base of sea level in an instant. All right, and that cannot be done by a human being. So these um, unexplainable maneuvers that they're doing has them baffled, scared, threatened, and they feel like um, at some point they're gonna have to defend themselves, and they are. And we know that according to biblical prophecy, but these angels are sent here on the behalf of the elect for salvation. All right. So right now, you know, there's investigation going on of the so-called white man and pretty much everyone else, man. All right. By the angels sent by the Most High. And uh, Esau understands that I'm talking about the top echelon. All right. The elites, they understand exactly what's going down. All right. These chairs are the salvation of Israel. OK. And so. Let's first start off with um was it second chronicles chapter sixteen and verse nine. All right. It says, For the eyes of the Lord Yahweh run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart, whose mind is perfect toward him. <laughs> All right, so who or what are the eyes of the Lord that would be the chariots that they are seeing they're going to and fro throughout the earth to show themselves strong all right they're intimidating the American uh, military also these other militaries as well all right they're showing themselves strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards the most high all right and this should give us faith understanding that this is what they're doing all right confounding Esau's military because they can't explain what the hell is going on and they are in fear. All right. Also in the book of Sirach 23 and 19, it says, Such a man only feared the eyes of men 
and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are ten thousand times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. All right. So nothing is hid from the Most High, Yahweh Shemoshah. And right now there's inquisition being made of these devils who have um, trodden down the Lord's chosen people, the Israelites, as they continue to do unto this day. All right. So second chapter six and eighteen it says, and it said, Behold, the days come that will begin to draw nigh, and to visit them that dwell upon the earth. That's why we see in the chariots. And will begin to make inquisition or extensive investigation of them. Would they be to have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness? And when the affliction of Zion, the Israelites, shall be fulfilled. All right. So there's inquisition being made of Esau and his wicked deeds. All right. Because this man has trodden down the Lord's righteous and um, he thought that he was going to get away with it. All right. Now let's go to the book of Hebrews before we get into uh, the actual lesson. All right, Hebrews 1 and 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? So these spirits, these angels that we send, are sent forth to minister for the elect to guide them who shall be heirs of salvation. <laughs> you see? Let's read in the NLT. Therefore, angels are only servants, spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. So every elect on this earth has a specific angel uh, uh, assigned to them, all right, to guide them in the way, as the scriptures say, okay, in Psalms, the 91st chapter. And so we have to believe that going into these times, all right. So from there, let's go to... Let's go to Second Kings. All right, because you had um, Elisha, who had an understudy, a servant, who was frightened when they were approached by an army. All right, and this is what he told his understudy. All right, so verse sixteen, and he answered, "Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them." All right. They that be with us, which are who? The angels, are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, Yahweh by Shemel Shai, I pray that you open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord Yahweh opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots and of fire round about Elisha. And in these times, you know, we uh, believe that the chariots are here through faith. We don't have to see them all the time, you know, but we know that they are there. So 18 says, and when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Most High and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. So you're going to have, you know, elect men who are going to call on you, how about you, in that time. And the Lord's going to perform miracles as such, using the angels. All right. Now let's go to Yahweh Shah. All right. And this is what he told Peter. So Matthew 26, and we'll start at 51. Now it says, And behold, one of them which were with Yahweh Shai, which is Peter, stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Yahweh Shai unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. And so he said to him, Thinkest thou that I cannot pray to my father? And he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels. But how then shall the scripture be fulfilled that it must be so? That thus it must be. Alright, so right here, Yahweh Shai is saying to Peter, Hey, don't you think I can call to my father and he'll send twelve legions of angels? Now what is twelve legions? Okay? It only takes one angel to destroy, you know, the whole earth. Or any army at that. But twelve legions, that's major overkill. So in the Greek, G3003, you got a legion, a body of soldiers whose numbers, whose number differed at different times. In the time of Augustus, seemed to have consisted of 6,826 men, or i.e. 6,100 foot soldiers. So we'll just, you know, round it out to 6,000. All right. Now let's 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 
go and add that up. You got you got twelve times six thousand. Alright. Which gives you seventy two thousand angels. So your house shot could have called down seventy two thousand angels at that point to handle business if you wanted to. <laughs> But how, you know, shut the script to be fulfilled. <laughs> All right. So in these times, you're going to see the angels be sent when men call upon the Lord. And they're going to do what they do, man. All right. So let's go to the account with um, King Hezekiah. Before I get into that, I want to read. Um, so I got some pulled up on All right. Okay. All right. Now this part right here, what says restoration of the temple? Now he is symbolic for the elect today. He says, according to the Bible, Hezekiah purified and repaired the temple. All right. And today we understand that the temple are us. All right. We turn from these idols. And purified ourselves by believing in his truth. So Hezekiah purified and repaired the temple, purged his idols, and reformed the priesthood. And that's what you see today in the spirit, man. He purged his idols and reformed the priesthood. In an effort to abolish idolatry from his kingdom, he destroyed the high places and the bronze serpent. All right, recordings being made by Moses, which had become objects of idolatrous worship. But the point is that he cleans the temple. All right, now let's hear or read what the Lord did for him since he did that. Okay? Second Chronicles 32, and we start at verse 1, and uh, we're reading the NLT. It says, After Hezekiah had faithfully carried out his work, all right, purified the temple, King Sennacherib of, of Syria invaded Judah. Okay? And like I said before, these things are written for our learning. So, this can be symbolic for Esau today, in which we know that he's going to try to besiege and sack the temple, the spiritual temple. It says he lays siege to the fortified towns, giving orders for his army to break through their walls. When Hezekiah realized that Senator Sherub also intended to attack Jerusalem, he consulted with his officials and military advisors, and they decided to stop the flow of the springs outside the city. They organized a huge work crew to stop the flow of the springs cutting off the brook that ran through the fields for they said why should the kings of Assyria come here to and find plenty of water and Hezekiah worked hard at repairing all the broken sections of the wall erecting towers and constructing a second wall outside the first he also reinforced the supporting terraces in the city of David and manufactured large numbers of weapons and shields he appointed military officers over the people and assembled them before him in the square at the city gate. Then Hezekiah encouraged them by saying, Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria or his mighty army. For there is a power far greater on our side. And that's what we're saying today with Esau, man. This nigga got the whole beast system that he's going to use to try and uh, destroy the temple, the Israelites. So 8 says, he may have a great army, but there are merely men, all right? We have the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Shah, our power to help us and to fight our battles for us. Hezekiah's words greatly encourage the people, all right? And that's why we encourage the hopeful elect during these times, all right? Comfort one another with these words, right? So verse 9 says, while King Sarah, uh, Sennacherib of, of Assyria was still besieging the town of uh, Lachish, he sent his officers to Jerusalem with this message for Hezekiah and all the people in the city. This is what King Sennacher of Assyria says. What are you trusting in that makes you think you can survive my siege of Jerusalem? Hezekiah said, The Lord our power, Yahweh will rescue us from the king of Assyria. Surely Hezekiah is misleading you, sentencing you to death by famine and thirst. Don't you realize that Hezekiah is the very person who destroyed all the Lord's shrines and altars? He commanded Judah and Jerusalem to worship only at the altar, at the temple, and to sacrifice 
and to offer sacrifices only alone? Surely you must realize what I and the other kings of Assyria before me have done to all the people of the earth. Were any other gods of those nations able to rescue their people from my power? Which of their gods was able to rescue its people from the destructive power of my predecessors? So he was puffed up. It says, what makes you think your God can rescue you from me? Same thing Esau saying. So it says, don't let Hezekiah deceive you. <laughs> don't let him fool you like this. I say it again. No God of any nation or kingdom has ever yet been able to rescue his people from me or my ancestors. How much less will your God rescue from my power? And Sennacherib's officers further mocked the Lord Yahweh Bashmashah and his servant Hezekiah, even insult upon insult. The king also sent letters scorning the Lord, the God of Israel. He wrote, Just as the gods of all the other nations failed to rescue their people from our power, so the God of Hezekiah will also fail. The Assyrian officials who brought the letters shouted this in Hebrew uh, to the people gathered on the walls of the city trying to terrify them so it would be easier to capture the city. These officers talked about the God of Jerusalem as though he were one of the pagan gods made by human hands. Then King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, cried out in a prayer, all right, to the Most High in heaven. <laughs> and the Lord Yahweh by Shemashah sent an angel who destroyed the Assyrian army with all his commanders and officers. So the Lord sent one angel that destroyed this man's whole army and officers, all right, like it wasn't shit. So this is what's going to happen when Esau comes in like a flood. We believe that. It. it says, so Sennacherib was forced to return home in disgrace to his own land. And he, and when he entered the temple of his God, some of his own sons killed him there <laughs> with a sword. Right? That is how the Lord rescued Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem from King Sennacherib of Assyria, from all the others who threatened them. So there was peace throughout the land. This is written for our faith, for our comfort, because when Esau comes in with all these different Gerger troops, you know, these UN troops from these different nations, all right, they're going to be confounded, all right, by the power of Yahweh by Shemel Shah. So this is ultimately why Esau is afraid, because he understands and knows the accounts, all right, in which when the Lord is with his people, man, he will fight and defend them, all right? So Psalm 55 in verse 16 it says as for me i will call upon the lord and the lord shall save me you see evening and morning and at noon will i pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice he had delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me for there were many with me you see there were many with me <laughs> all right the most high you have about you shall hear and afflict them even he that abide of old to lie, because they have no changes, therefore they fear not the Most High. See? So we wait on Esau to come in. We believe that Yahweh Bashmel Shai is going to show himself mighty. You know, we know this for a fact. Alright, on the behalf of the elect. So keep the faith, man. Alright, we will be protected if we are the elect. So with that, Lord willing, you edify until next time I say, Shalom.